and uh, welcome to uh, today's uh, meeting of the Perth and Kinross uh, Licensing Board of um, 7th uh, of uh, no November. Um, could I uh, ask uh, all members uh, to ensure that their mobile phones and members of the public um, are um, switched to silent or switched uh, off? Um, I'd like to uh, introduce the uh, licensing board. Uh, joining remotely, we have uh, councillors Brock uh, and councillor James. Um, from my right, we have uh, councillor Anderson, uh, councillor McPherson, uh, councillor Stewart, uh, the vice convener, uh, councillor Williamson, uh, myself convener, uh, councillor Barrett, uh, deputy clerk to the board, Colin Elliott, uh, councillor Ahern uh, and councillor uh, Parrott. Um, can I ask, are there any apologies? OK, uh, and are there any declarations of interest? None. OK. Uh, do members agree the minutes of the uh, meeting of the 22nd of September 22 for approval and signature? Right. Okay, um, our first item on the uh, application on the agenda is a major uh, variation uh, at uh, Dal uh, Castle. Uh, can I ask that the designated premises manager and general manager uh, for the premises, uh, Ms Duncan, is brought into the me uh, meeting by telephone? Barry, are you in, in the meeting and can you hear us? Yes, I can. You can. Uh, I, I don't know whether you heard my introductions of the, the members of the board earlier. Um, no, I didn't. No, no. OK, um, I'll just uh, run through them. Uh, we have uh, Councillor uh, Anderson, Councillor McPherson, uh, Councillor Stewart, Councillor Williamson, uh, myself, Councillor Barrett, uh, Councillor Ahern, uh, and Councillor Parrott, and remotely we have uh, Councillors Brock uh, and uh, Councillor James. So, okay. Um, this is a, a major variation for Dalmungi Castle, Hospital of Glen Shee, and can I ask the Deputy Clerk to introduce the application? Thank you, Convener. Um, the premises licence has previously changed as a result of minor variations, particularly changes to premises manager. However, just for your information, the, prem the premises licence details and thus the operation of the alcohol aspects of the business have not changed since the premises licence took effect back in 1st September 2009. In terms of the variation, the most notable of the variations are firstly, amending the terminal on sales are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 11 p.m. to 12 midnight in line with board policy, amending various activities to take place out with core hours and adding indoor outdoor sports as an activity within and out with core hours. Also adding function hours for the public, not just residents, up to 1 a.m. They're restricted to 1 a.m. seven days per week with a 30 minute close down to operate. And lastly, to amend access by children and young persons. Now, also of note, members, that individual activities are added of yoga, clay pigeon shooting, golf, falconry and archery. And it's specifically stated in the variation application that there is no alcohol available during those activities. Uh, of course, that would go on the premises license should you grant the variation. Now, members have also given you a copy of the existing ground floor layout plan. Just for your information, that isn't to be varied. And lastly, can we know there have been no objections received? Thank you. Um, thank you uh, very much for that. Um, can I ask uh, Mrs Duncan to uh, speak to the application? So obviously, as, as stated, the, the um, licence, the operation plan, it's not been updated since um, 2009. Um, there are lots of um, small variations that we're, we're looking for just to sort of update um, and um, sort of keep it in line with what um, we would like to do with the hotel and give us a bit more freedom in terms of when we serve breakfast, when we can start conferences and things. Um, I think the other thing that um, wasn't mentioned, though, was the wording 
um, so the license and aging that we use, she's actually removed existing text, which said, um, sorry, I'm just scrolling back down to the original one. It said on there, so 5F, any other activities, the original um, premises license said no provision of alcohol to residents out with core licensing hours. Um, so she has actually amended that um, and she's replaced it with function hours. Um, I think that's probably my only question is that does that then mean that we would then be able to serve um, our residents? So, you know, if they were to phone down for room service at, at half past um, midnight and ask for something, would we then be able to do that? Um, in terms of the other changes, I think, yes, we've we've sort of we've given ourselves enough freedom with the sort of yoga, clay pigeon shooting and things um, and given us that sort of flexibility. Thanks very much for that. Um, I'll um, refer your query to the deputy clerk, but I think if it was residents that were phoning down uh, to order a drink through room service, that would be uh, permitted, but I'll let the deputy clerk clarify. Okay. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. The current wording that uh, Ms Duncan's referring to on the premise licence is that there is no provision of alcohol to residents out with core licensing hours. Now, the variation takes that away, and as a matter of law, that then goes back to residents can be served alcohol 24 hours. Of course, it's the operation's choice as to how they do that and when they do that. Uh, yeah. The reference to function hours is different. Um, if a function is taking place, of course, residents can be there, guests can be there, but is, that's as much for the general public. So if it's a big function, your general public who are not residents can come in as well. So there's two different things operating there. But in answer to your question, yes, residents could be served alcohol out with core hours if the variation is granted. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying. I can't imagine it happening that often up here, um, but it's just nice to know that we do have that flexibility. Does that conclude your remarks, Vary? Yes, it does. Right. Are there any questions for Ms Duncan? Councillor Ahern. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for coming to the board. Um, my question is on a paragraph in here which states about uh, it's also note that individual activities are yoga, clay pigeon shooting, golf, four green and archery, and it is specifically stated there is to be no alcohol available during those activities. My assumption is that whilst you've got particularly shooting and archery, you're not closing access to all the bars, but what you're actually doing is restricting access to drink within those areas. But uh, my, my question is, do you monitor um, patrons that are using those activities that haven't previously been to the bar and then gone along and are intoxicated whilst shooting and uh, participating in archery? Um, so these are theoretical activities. We've not actually had um, archery um, at the hotel yet. I would expect that, you know, these activities are probably going to be sort of 11 o'clock in the morning and that it's probably going to be less of an issue but yes absolutely we would have to monitor um who was then taking part in them okay so they they may not necessarily be in the morning they may well become afternoon activities but you will have somebody that will be monitoring the users of both the shooting and the archery to make sure that nobody is intoxicated um whilst trying to participate in both, both those activities yes we would Thank you. Are there any other questions? No. Is there anything that you would like to say, Vary, in terms of summing up? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I think we're uh, now ready to come to a decision. Do we agree to vary the premises license holders address and vary the operating plan uh, as sought? And remote members? Agreed. Okay. Um, can I ask the deputy clerk if there's anything else to add? Can I ask the deputy clerk if there's anything else to add? Sorry, Kimina, no, I, I'm 
um, that members have granted variation as sought, and I have nothing more to add. Um, thank you um, very much for that. Um, our next application uh, is a major variation. Sorry. OK, um, Vary, you're able to leave the meeting now. OK, thank you. Thanks. OK, our next uh, application is a major variation application for the Invergowrie Inn. Uh, can I ask that the premise license holder, Colin Murphy, is brought into the meeting by telephone? Uh, good morning, Colin. Um, thank you for uh, attending uh, the, the, the meeting today. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce the uh, members of the uh, licensing board uh, who are here. Uh, we have uh, Councillor uh, Anderson, Councillor McPherson, Councillor uh, Stewart, uh, Councillor Williamson, myself, Councillor Barrett, uh, Deputy Clerk to the board, Colin Elliott, uh, Councillor Ahern and Councillor Parrott. Uh, and joining us remotely, uh, we have uh, Councillor Brock and Councillor James. Um, this is a major uh, variation application for uh, the Invergowrie Inn, 130 Main Street, uh, Invergowrie. Uh, and can I ask the Deputy Clerk uh, to introduce the application? Yeah. Um, Colin, can you just confirm that you can hear us and that we can hear you? Yes, yeah, you can hear you loud and clear, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Convener. Uh, this variation application has taken time to reach the board. Primarily, this was due to one of the previous joint premises licence holders passing away and the premises licence then having to be transferred to Mr Murphy. It's understood that Mr Murphy was the tenant of the premises. The main purpose of the proposed variation is to extend the beer garden at the front of the premises. The area is proposed to be extended into what is a car park along the front of the premises. That area is technically licensed at the moment, but only for the purpose of patrons transiting out of the bar to the existing front beer garden. People don't are not allowed to stop in that transitory area and drink. There is one disabled parking bay to be left uh, to the left of the car park, which is non-licensed, that will remain. Uh, now, planning permission was granted on 4th May 2021 for the extension of the outdoor area. Planning, just for your information, members, planning conditions include the hours of operation of the outdoor seating area shall be restricted to 0800 to 2200 hours Monday to Sunday. Uh, no music amplified or otherwise shall be permitted in the outdoor seating area at any time. And in planning terms, a noise management plan was also had to be submitted. Now, the proposed changes into 5F of the operating plan largely reflect the planning permission. In fact, they're more restrictive because it's 11 a.m. is what's looked for. Uh, now, the proposed location and layer plans showing the proposed extended front uh, terrace beer garden are attached for members' information. The red line of the new area as it comes back towards the building is not totally accurate, but it's clear from the measurements that the proposed front beer terrace beer garden extends up to, but does not include the disabled parking bay. Uh, the extended area will therefore be accessible from the front bar door. Now, members, there are other changes sought within the variation. They mostly do not seek changes, but are seeking to simplify and clarify the terms of the premises license. It is also proposed to extend Thursday on sales time of the hour from 11.45 to 12.30, so that is a change that's in line with board policy, and to restrict Sunday commencement of off sales from 10 a.m. up to 11 a.m., and that will just bring it in line with Monday to Saturday, so the off sales will all be 11 a.m. And, Convener, the only other thing to add is that no objections have been received. Um, thank you uh, very much for that. Uh, Mr Murphy, can I uh, ask uh, you to speak to your application? Yes, uh huh. Over to you, Mr. Murphy. Yeah, um, it's just basically just as has been said, it's just to extend the front beer garden. It's, it's, been, it's mainly used for outside eating purposes. You know? Obviously, during the during the COVID period and things like that, people weren't allowed inside, and, and it was just to extend it. It's basically for eating purposes mainly. Yeah, you know? it's not a busy beer garden. You know? 
it's I've never done one of these for him, so I'm not what to say, but but yeah, that's, that's that's the main reason I want it for just to extend the, the outside dining area. More, more more people now are looking to eat outside rather than eat inside after COVID. Yeah. They feel they feel more comfortable sitting outside when the weather's nice. Yeah. Thanks very much for that, Mr. Murphy. Can you tell me how many tables and chairs you'll you'll have in that area? It's it's picnic benches I've got, and the the, the seat each picnic bench seats uh, four, and there's five tables. Mm. Right. Okay. Thanks very much for that. Are there any other questions, uh, Councillor Parrott? Uh, thank you, Raj. Can you just confirm that the works for which planning permission was granted to facilitate this application have been completed? Thank you. They have been completed. Yes. Thanks. Are there any other questions? No. Is there anything that you'd like to say by way of summing up, Mr. Murphy? No, no not really. No, it's just. I, I really, I would really like to this application to go through because it, it does have, it really does help the business as well. Like, and in this hard times and nowadays, it's every little bit helps us. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Mr. Murphy. Um, I think we're um, ready to come to a, a decision. Um, do we agree to vary the description of the premises, vary the operating plan, and amend the location and layout plans as sought? Only. I'm. That's granted. Can I, I ask if the deputy clerk has anything to add? Nothing further to add. That's the variation application granted as sought. Thank you very much, Mr. Murphy. Oh, lovely. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda, uh, item 5.3, is a major variation application for the Pine Trees Hotel Pit Lockery. Um, and we should have Lynn Simpson from TLT Solicitors, uh, but not with your client. No, client. No. I'm actually from TLT Solicitors acting on behalf of Anova, who act for the applicant, and he sends his apologies. Unfortunately, he's not able to make it this morning. He had planned to, but something's cropped up. Okay, thanks very much, Lynn. Do you need me to introduce the... Never mind. No, I heard it earlier. I'll save you having to repeat that all again. Okay, um, in which case, I'll just repeat that it's a major variation application for the Pine Trees Hotel, Strathview um, Terrace in Pitlochry, uh, and can ask the Deputy Clerk to introduce the application. <coughs> Thank you, Convener. Not much to say on this one. Uh, development management did comment that although they have no objection to the application, they've been unable to trace a planning application for the occasional use of marquee weddings and functions in the lawn area to the side of the hotel. Planning permission for the use of the marquee may be required. Uh, their members, um, development management, haven't objected. So what we did was we've asked the agent to contact development management regarding this. Um, and I should say that it's referred to already in the premises licence anyway. And use of the marquee, so there's no real change there other than showing the outdoor area. Now, moving on, the main aspects of the pros, pros variation are to increase on sales terminal hours Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 11 pm to 12 midnight in line with board policy, to include new activities, to remove reference to the supply of alcohol to residents out with core license hours being discouraged, similar to the previous application, of course clarify access by children young persons and to increase on sales capacity from 100 to 190, 190 persons. Now, a uh, copy of the location and outdoor area plans attached for information, they're not proposed to be amended. I have nothing really more to add, Convener. Um, thank you very much for uh, that. Um, can I ask Lynn Simpson if there's anything that she wants to say to the application? Thank you. I thought it might be helpful just to explain the background to, to the application and how it came about. This is one of the licences that was granted during transition in 2009 when we switched over to the, the current system. And it hasn't really been reviewed since then. And following a, a health check of the licence, there were a few areas that needed to be updated. There were a few areas that weren't entirely clear. So that is essentially the reason for the the, the variation application, we're just looking to tidy up various aspects, um, particularly around the children, young persons access and the, the outdoor areas. 
uh, with regards to the the planning query from development management, we did pick up with them and the applicant is entirely aware that planning permission would be required for any marquees. So the terms of the licence are subject to any planning re required planning permission being obtained. The applicant is, is aware of that. Um, and then otherwise, the, these are really the amendments are really just to provide a bit of clarity and give the hotel a little bit more flexibility than than what they'd had previously. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for that. Are there any questions for Lynn? Councillor Stewart. Good morning. Uh, you're um, wanting to amend the sales on sales capacity to 190 persons. Um, is that to if possible, when you're wanting to use the marquee, is that where that capacity is increased to? It's uh, it's it's partly due to a bit of an error in I think in the original capacity. The the capacity on the operating plan didn't quite tie up with the capacities that were on the layout plans. So actually the capacity of 190, the hotel can easily accept that without the outdoor area. But yes, that would be that would include the outdoor area if that was being used as well. The applicant certainly doesn't envisage that the hotel would be absolutely full and the outdoor area would be used as well. It would all kind of be, be as one. Thank you. Councillor Williamson. Thank you, convener. My question is about uh, noise mitigation from from the uh, marquee outside at I know Pitlockery, at the Pine Trees Hotel. It sits in a bit of a dell, doesn't it? So, so I would imagine the noise reverberates around those houses. Does the applicant envisage uh, installing any noise mitigation? I imagine so. Yes, I think like one of the previous applications, it's in a sense it's a, it's a bit of fiction at the moment. It, it's something that they are looking for the option to do but haven't actually delivered that or haven't held any functions um yeah and obviously with planning permission being required for the marquee I, I suspect that would be part of the planning permission conditions anyway that some form of noise management uh, plan would need to be in place are there any other questions no um, in which case, I, I think we're now ready to come to a decision. Do we agree to vary the operating plan as sought? Read online. Yep. Um, can I ask the deputy clerk if there's anything to add? No, nothing to add. That's big, the variation application granted. Thanks very Thank much, Simpson. Uh, our next item is a major variant application at Schoon um, Palace. It's on page 37 onwards in your in your papers. And we have um, Stephen McGowan from TLT Solicitors and his client. Um, do you need me to introduce the members again or have you? <laughs> no, it's certainly not, uh, convener. Thank you for the offer. Uh, your Honours, I shall introduce my client. No, this is Stephen Brannigan, Your Honours. He's the head of Schoon Palace. I have to say it's not very often you're sat in a chamber where your client's premises is on, a, on the wall. Uh, I think that may be a first, uh, but um, I shall no doubt uh, introduce the application when appropriate. Um, thanks very much for that, Mr McGowan. Um, as I said, this is a major application from uh, Schoon Palace. Uh, can I ask the uh, Deputy Clerk to introduce the application? Thank you, Convener. The proposed variation from Marley seats to firstly increase on sales terminal licence hours Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 11 p.m. to 12 midnight in line with board policy. Secondly, clarify the activities taking place during festive social demand and festive function hours and make reference to close down for functions. Thirdly, add reference to internet sales and delivery. Fourthly, increase the off sales provision in the food shop with the food shop layout plan amended as a result. Now, as internet sales and delivery of alcohol are sought, board policy 5.2 on delivery of alcohol 
and consumption by persons under 18 or drunk persons is therefore relevant and members have a copy of the policy in their papers. It's a matter for the board whether it is necessary or expedient to impose a local condition on the licence if granted to reflect that policy. Now, the change in off-sales capacity from 12.82 square metres square to 3.341 metres square on the face of it appears to be a reduction. However, it appears the existing capacity was incorrectly calculated, and in reality, there is an increase in off-sales capacity within the shop. Um, easiest way to think about it is the existing area is equivalent to shelving C and D on the proposed plan, which is page 42 of your papers. Um, and of course, they're looking for A, B, C, D, and E now. So that, that is a, a fairly significant increase. No objections have been received, convener. There's one more matter I would add is that uh, the premises license holders agreed to uh, move some wording. It was proposed that it's all relation to the functions that were originally proposed for the what we call the box after 5e in the operating plan. However, myself, the LSO, the police, we're all used to seeing that in box 5f. So to avoid confusion on our part, if we shift that wording across, and I can give you the wording if you need, shift that wording across, we're not making any changes, we're just changing the position of it within the licence to avoid confusion later on. I have nothing more to add, Camino. Um, thanks for that. Can I ask the uh, premises uh, licence holder to speak to the application other agent? Thanks, Convener, and your honours. Um, yes, I think the uh, narration there is very fair. And the primary driver of this application, your honours, is I think the change to the off sale, as Colin said, we've tidied up a few other things as well. The desire to um, change the off sale offer at Schoon Palace, I think, is primarily driven by the fact that they are seeking to support a wider number of local brewers and distillers who will have certain beers or whiskies or gins available in the gift shop. And as your owners will appreciate, the off sales of uh, offer at Schoon Palace is not like a typical high street shop. It is primarily for gifting purposes. And what they've done is they've desired to have partnerships with local companies to showcase their products for visitors who are coming in to the palace and maybe buy a bottle of whiskey or buy a bottle of beer that's from a local brewery or local distiller. So that desire is what has led to the remodelling of the shop to allow those, with your honour's consent, those additional uh, product lines to be available. What we've also done in the wording of the application is to give your honour's comfort around the um, remote ordering of alcohol, where perhaps someone on the schoon, going onto the Schoon Palace website may order a bottle of whisky again for gifting purposes, I think, in the main. Um, so just to give your honour some comfort on that, the usual uh, inbuilt rules regarding home deliveries of alcohol, of course, apply to this licence, just as with any other. Um, but we've also said that in relation to the delivery of the alcohol, that of course we would abide by the usual age verification schemes. Um, it happens to be that Schoon Palace are going to use parcel force and parcel force of an age verification scheme. Some of your honours may be familiar with it. Um, pretty robust. Very good, I think, at communication in terms of the customer's end of it. So the customer knows full well if they're ordering alcohol that they have to have their ID at the point where the courier comes to deliver it to them. So the messaging to the customer is quite good. Um, and the parcel force system is such that if it is an alcoholic uh, item, then the courier has to request the ID from the customer if it was coming to my house. And of course, Chance 25 applies at the uh, delivery of alcohol face to face, just as it does in a shop or in a bar. So we just wanted to give you a wee bit of comfort about that, hence that wording that's there. Um, Colin's mentioned in terms of the policy, the policy is there, it is being followed. If your owners feel that you want to have the policy attached as a condition, well, that's just fine by us because we're doing it anyway. Um, so, so, that, so that's no problem at all. And as I say, the rest of it is just a few bits and pieces which we've tidied up in the wording, which is hopefully all accepted. Um, I hope that helps your honours to understand the reasoning behind the application, and I'll be happy to take any questions that you might have for me. Um, thank you very much for that, Mr McGowan. I've got a question from Councillor Parrott. Thank you, Arch, and, and thank you very much for what you've explained to us. I'm, I'm delighted to see that you're choosing to support local business in terms of your, your offer. Um, and I'm assuming, and perhaps you can confirm that if you like that, the online offer is the same as the offer in, in on the premises. And um, can I ask whether you actually do you have any Schoon Palace branded products that you're seeking to offer as well? 
Thank you. Apologies. <laughs> the product line which is online is the same product line which is in the shop. And yes, there are Schoon Palace branded items. Um, what will happen is that the palace will work with a particular supplier, a distiller or a brewer and create a branded whiskey or a branded beer. Um, but they will also stock products by those brewers and distillers that are their typical or usual products as well. Are there any other questions? Um, would the uh, Prime Minister's licence would like to sum, sum up? I don't think anything extra for me, convener. Thank you for the opportunity, but I hope we've explained the application um, to, to your satisfaction, and I would simply ask you to move Grant if you're with me. Um, thanks, Mr McGowan. I think we are ready uh, to come to a decision. Um, do we agree to vary the operating plan, amend the food shop layout plan as sought, and add the local condition regarding deliveries of alcohol not going to under-18s um, or drunk persons? Agreed. And there's nothing. OK. Is there anything that the Deputy Clerk would like to add? I think that's quite clear, Convener, that members, uh, including online as far as I could see, virtual members, is that uh, granted the variation subject to the additional local condition about deliveries. I'll not go through the wording because I think Mr McGowan is fairly familiar with that. Uh, the only other thing will be we'll shift the wording that we talked about from box after 5E to 5F. And nothing else to add. OK. Thank you, Mr McGowan. Again, thank you, Mr McGowan. Uh, our next item is the Chief Constable's annual report uh, from page 43 onwards in your pack. Can I ask that uh, Police Scotland Sergeant James Gordon uh, are brought into the meeting? Can you hear us, Sergeant Gordon? We can indeed. Right. I believe that PC Simpson's with you as well. You're unmuted, Miss PC Simpson. Not a good start. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. I, I'll just introduce the um, the, the the members um, remotely. We have a uh, councillor uh, James um, and. Uh, Councillor Brock um, at the top table from uh, my right. We have Councillor Anderson, Councillor McPherson, uh, Councillor Stewart, Councillor Williamson, myself, uh, Councillor Peter Varrett, uh, Deputy Clerk Colin uh, Elliott, uh, Councillor Ahern and Councillor um, Parrott. Um, so as I said, this is the Chief Constable's annual report for 21-22. Uh, and can I ask the police to uh, speak to the report, please? Yes, good morning. Um, it's not my intention to read the full report to the members who've got that in front of you. I'd um, just like to highlight the, the continued uh, positive relationships that we do have with the uh, LSO uh, from the licensing team, as well as the trade and other stakeholders in the Perth and Kinross area. Um, we've worked in close partnership with the Environmental Health and Licensing Standards Officers uh, throughout that period to actively support and provide advice and information to license holders, which was, um, I'm sure you would all be aware, which was extremely difficult for some of them due to the ongoing COVID-19 regulations that were imposed on the trade at the time. Um, there was a, it's worth highlighting, there was a, at the end of the the pandemic, or as we started to ease out the, the pandemic, there was an increase um, of antisocial behaviour and other um, crimes and disorder being reported uh, within the Perth and Kinross city centre areas. Now, this was predominantly at weekends um, um, on a Friday and Saturday evening in groups between 40 and 100 who regularly con congregate in the public space in the park areas of Perth city centre. Um, due to this increase, the local policing team, supported by the division licensing team, op uh, developed Operation Stung. This was an intelligence-led, proactive uh, operation to deter, de divert, deter and detect and disrupt violence, outsource behaviour and drug and alcohol abuse um, involving youths. Uh, local policing teams were dedicated every weekend to carry out high visibility, 
high visibility patrols in the area um, and were engaging with the young people present. Um, this, this saw a, a reduction in the number of incidents being reported to ourselves. We also uh, had the Don't Ask For It proxy sales campaign um, and we visited 38 licensed premise. Not one could be identified as being involved in the proxy sales. However, um, we did visit 30 of the the ones in the city centre, um, giving them additional support and advice. There were no test purchasing operations carried out in the period that were reported, and that was due to um, the review and the form of the procedures and uh, processes adopted. Um, and with that in mind, test purchasing would only ever be considered as a last resort and it has to be intelligence led. So as previously stated, there wasn't one particular premises that was had been identified um, as being involved in proxy sales. That's why the, there was no test purchasing operations carried out. Looking at the year ahead, um, as you would see, as you would have seen on social media and in the news nationally, um, there was an increased report of spiking by injection um, was uh, being reported throughout the UK and including Scotland. Um, this um, also uh, come in the midst of a national discussion about violence against women and girls concerning concerns about women's safety and calls for more to be done to keep women safe. Um, with that in mind, we uh, I had the team undertake bystander trainer training um, to focus on the perpetrators and to encourage people to report suspicious peoples and step in early when they think someone may be at risk of someone else's behaviour. Um, the team have been, as I said, all trained and throughout this year will be focusing on sharing that training and awareness sessions with the stakeholders in the GNK area um, to actively encourage the licensees and their, um, to actually engage with licensees and offer awareness sessions to them and their staff. Um, we're also a, in support of protecting young, pers young protecting children and young persons from harm licensing objective. The licensing uh, team along with the community policing teams again will promote the it'll cost you campaign this will raise the awareness of the risks and penalties associated with buying alcohol for anyone under the age of 18. to conclude i would just like to thank you for your continued support and what has been a challenging year for us all um we have to adapt to a new way of working in this ever changing circumstances which has been embraced by all thank you Uh, thank you uh, very much for um, that uh, introduction to um, your report. Um, could I just ask a, 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 a question um, with regard to um, spiking? Um, and I just wondered if you could tell us a bit more about what the um, signs of um, spiking are that are referred to in the in the, in the report, uh, and also whether there's a plan to uh, prioritise any particular um, types of, of of premises, you know, either large pubs, nightclubs, um, or um, other premises which might be um, more vulnerable to, 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 to spiking? Yeah, the, the, it's a difficult one. Um, the, what we're being told or what uh, um, victims are telling us is they've, they're losing their memory and attending on a night out or and within licensed premises um, and consuming alcohol. However, they're, they're, sta they're telling us that they're not consuming enough alcohol to cause the blackouts that they're experiencing. Some people are reporting that they've got some injuries um, similar to what they perceive to be needle stick injuries and things like that. Um, yes, in respect to the response to that, we are the bystander training is to focus on that and to make the license and trade more aware of the dangers and the risks. And uh, we have Constable Darren Smith who's in the office, he's uh, our lead for it, and he's attended at the licensing forum to offer uh, that mem the members there the, the training and also to engage with the, the other stakeholders and licensed premises to actively encourage them to take this training up. Um, so going throughout this year, especially over the Christmas period, we will be contacting them, the larger premises, to ask again uh, to allow us to, uh, to carry out this session. Um, thanks very much for that, Sergeant Gordon. Are there um, any other questions? Councillor Heron. Thank you very much and uh, good morning, uh, Sergeant Gordon. Um, 
we, you mentioned about Operation Stung, and that was the um, the possible sales of uh, alcohol from premises. What I want to pick up on is the shoplifting of uh, alcohol from premises. And there's, um, I'm aware of some significant quantities of alcohol that have been shoplifted from major supermarkets within the Perth city area. And I just wondered how you followed up on that and whether you treat that differently to um, shoplifting of other products. No, not at all. Um, I think the what you're referring to when there's large um, large numbers of uh, alcohol being stolen from supermarkets and types of places like that, um, it tends to suggest that it's, the trend would be that it would be travelling organised crime groups that are doing that kind of activity opposed to um, a local individual going in and uh, carrying out this act. Um, they are progressed and they are prioritised um, by the police and uh, they are investigated. So your the assumption by the police then is it is organised crime and not um, smaller crime units within within the Perth area. Then intelligence would suggest that uh, that predominantly these activities are normally carried out by uh, travelling uh, crime groups. Um, however, we obviously can't rule out that there may be instances of a, a local. Um, but there's no evidence of that that I'm aware of. OK, thank you. Councillor Parrott. Thank you, Arch, and, and thank you for your report. Perhaps following up slightly on Councillor Hearn's question, um, are you aware of what any, or is there any evidence for any county lines type operation with regards to the importing into our area of um, improperly obtained or improperly um, imported alcohol? Um, you don't mention it, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it's not a problem. There's no evidence for it, but I'd be interested to hear. Thanks. No, um, the, the county lines aspect of it, and that's um, modern day slavery and things like that. The activities we've got uh, policing teams that are focused on that and uh, go out and do a lot of work and investigations into county lines in terms of. Um, uh, alcohol i think that would be a matter for the trading standards um for if there's no duty being paid on uh, the alcohol that's been brought in and then resold in premises that, thanks I was, I was not thinking in terms of that that alcohol being sold in premises I, I i was thinking more in terms of it being sold informally um in the community thanks yeah, apologies, sorry, I misunderstood your question. Um, but yeah, there's no, that's not, well, certainly with no intelligence that's happening in the Perth and Kinross area. Thanks, Raj. Councillor McPherson. Um, thank you, Sergeant Gordon. Uh, my question was around um, the test purchasing operations. Um, and you say that um, all such operations must be intelligent led. Um, I just wondered where sort of typically in the past that sort of intelligence has come from. Sorry, I missed the last part of your question there. Oh, it was just that um, you say that um, um, all such operations must be intelligence led. Um, and I just wonder where typically in the past that intelligence has come from. Yeah, that's uh, come from a various variance um, uh, sources that could be through um, local authority, departments within the local authority, um, or it could be members of the public. Um, calling in as well to report that. Thank you. Are there any other questions? No. Um, thank you very much for uh, your report, Sergeant Gordon. Um, do we agree to note the content of the report? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item uh, 7.1 on our uh, agenda is a personal uh, licence review for uh, you and Murchie. It's on uh, page uh, 55 uh, onwards in our, our papers. Um, we have uh, you and Murchie and his agent Alistair MacDonald um, present. 
Um, I'll just uh, do the in introductions. Uh, we have Councillor Anderson, uh, Councillor McPherson, Councillor Stewart, Councillor Williamson, uh, myself, Councillor Barrett, uh, Deputy Clerk to the Board, uh, Colin Elliott, uh, Councillor Ahern and uh, Councillor Parrott. Uh, and joining us uh, virtually, we have uh, Councillor Brock and Councillor uh, James. Um, this is a review of a personal licence and we also have the, uh, the police presence as well. Um, this is a review of a personal licence following notification of a relevant offence um, and confirmation of that offence by uh, Police Scotland. Uh, can I ask uh, Police Scotland to speak to um, the offence? Thank you. Mr. Sorry, Ewan, hold on a moment. Oh, if I could just pause you there. OK, um, we'll get uh, the Deputy Clerk to uh, introduce it first. My apologies, Commissioner, I forgot to put that into your procedure note. <laughs> Uh, this personal license review was originally scheduled for the board meeting of 19th September, but when that meeting had to be rescheduled for to 22nd September, there was insufficient time to allocate to this matter. As therefore, it was therefore removed from the agenda and effectively deferred to today. The personal license holder, uh, through his agent, notified that he had been convicted of a relevant offence, and you have a copy of that notification in your papers. Police Scotland have confirmed, and again you've got a copy of their confirmation that the applicant was convicted of a relevant offence on 29th July 2022 in Edinburgh Justice of the Peace Court in relation to an assault that took place on 13th December 2019. The applicant, according to the police, was fined £180 with the addition of a victim surcharge of £10. Police Scotland do not make any recommendation in relation to the personal licence. Now, it's understood, and I'm sure Mr Macdonald will clarify, understood Mr Murchie was working in Edinburgh and is not a designated premises manager for any licensed premise. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to deal with it today. It'd have to be the other board. Mr Murchie and his, uh, obviously Mr Macdonald are present today. And of course, we have the police participating by uh, video conferencing. You have nothing else to add, Commander. Sorry. Okay, thank you um, for that. So can I now ask uh, Police Scotland to um, speak to uh, the offence? Mr Ian Murchie holds a personal licence with Perth and Kinross Council, which was granted on the 1st of March 2022. On the 19th of August 2022, Police Scotland submitted a notice of conviction in respect of Mr Murchie after he was convicted of assault. The circumstances around this conviction are that about 0 to 13 hours on the Friday 13th of December 2019, Mr Murchie was within Hive nightclub in Edinburgh when four patrons unknown to him were dancing on the main dance floor. Mr Murchie has approached the group and proceeded to slap the buttocks and back area of a male in the group three times. The male told Mr Murchie he did not wish to interact with him, however he failed to move away and a small tussle began where Mr Murchie also slapped the male to the face. The pair were separated by other patrons and Mr Murchie was taken away from the male as he tried to calm him down. A member of this group was female and Mr Murchie, for no apparent reason, has punched her to the face, resulting in her falling to the ground. Police were contacted and Mr Murchie was arrested, interviewed and charged with two assaults. As a result of this assault, the female had a bruise to her forehead but did not require medical attention. Mr Murchie was interviewed in regards to the initial assault on the male being sexually motivated. However, there was insufficient evidence to corroborate this. On the 29th of July 2022 at Edinburgh JP Court, Mr Murchie pled guilty to one charge of assault and received a fine of £180 with a victim surcharge of £10. Uh, this was in relation to the second assault against the female and a not guilty plea was accepted for the first assault with regards to the mail. Thank you. Um, thank you uh, very much uh, for that. Uh, do we have any questions for the, the police? Uh, can I ask the police, um, you know, what um, sort of state did uh, Mr. Uh, Murchie appear to be in um, when the police attended? Uh, just a second, I'll just refer back to the report. Yeah, from reading the report, it doesn't make 
any reference to uh, if and how intoxicated he was. OK, thank you for that. Um, Councillor Williamson. Thank you. Would it be possible to establish, was Mr Munchie working at uh, the nightclub at the time or was he just uh, on a social evening? I believe from reading the report, he was just there on a social uh, social night out. Are there any other questions? No. Can I ask the um, personal license holder to respond? Thank you, convener. Um, Alistair McDonald of McDonald Licensing. Um, I will, after I've finished, I will ask you to say to say um, a few words as well, if I may. Um, I know you would like to. Uh, as, as well as being a licensing solicitor, we have a training company and you attended our training company at the beginning of January. And as well as asking people if they have convictions before lodging their application, we do ask them if they have pending charges. And Ewan came to me afterwards after the course and, and explained that he, he did have a pending charge. When we lodged the application, we did actually make reference to there being a pending charge, although technically we're, we're not obliged to do so, but we just wanted to, to um, let the board know and also to um, remind Ewan that as and when he was convicted that he would have to notify the board. He was convicted at the end of July and we notified the board on the 11th of August, which was within the statutory period to um, do that, which the police then confirmed the details of the conviction. But but we, we did um, notify the board initially. Um, and of course, as, as, as Colin has said, it was initially scheduled for the 19th of September, but we're now before you today. I would say that um, I've known you, in, well, I suppose I've, I've known you in since January, since he attended the course. And, and, you know, I couldn't really believe it when he told me the details of the course. I mean, it just seems so out of, out of character. He's absolutely, um, humiliated and so embarrassed to be here and and that follows obviously the same the same at the at the court hearing um he's never been in trouble before or since and as you will see your honors this incident did take place at the end of 2019 so it is nearly three years ago now so far as the content of the police letter is concerned there's not really anything we can take issue with I, I, I'd like to explain our understanding of the events of that evening, although they are limited. Um, you, Your Honour asked about his, his state of mind and, and the police the police uh, um, weren't clear in that. But what I would say is that Ewan remembers very little of that evening. He had been at his flat with his, um, in, with his flatmates and some friends uh, and they were drinking there. And then about midnight, just after midnight, they decided to go to a club. Ewan wasn't particularly keen in doing so, but the rest of them were, so he got dragged along as well. He'd had a few drinks in the in, in his flat, but he didn't consider that he was that he was drunk at that stage. He got into the he got into the club okay. And he thinks he was only in the club for about half an hour or so, probably as far as he can remember, just had one drink in the club. And and then it just all went blank and he remembers nothing else for the rest of that evening, apart from various flashes until he woke up in the cells the next morning. And that is the very unfortunate state of affairs, Your Honours, for which, as I say, he is totally embarrassed and can only apologise but just to stress the fact that he had nothing to do with the with the nightclub. It is not a place that he has ever worked at all. Um, he has seen the CCTV footage. And as I say, he has had flashbacks of it, but he just does not, he cannot really explain why something like this happened. It is just, he's quite a shy guy and it is just so totally out of character. He knows that there was a bit of a scuffle. He saw that in the CCTV and he knows he just sort of maybe made a wild swing at one point, 
and and very unfortunately that did connect with with a young lady for which he is so embarrassed and sorry. Um, I think I was interested in the chief constable's re report because uh, it mentions um, spiked drinks and one suspicion or one thought that he'd had was he could not understand why he went from feeling OK to not being able to remember anything and he did think that that was a possibility to the extent that he went to the Royal Infirmary in Edinburgh the next morning and asked if they would test him. Um, but they wouldn't. They won't do that in these circumstances, and it was probably too late anyway, to be fair. Uh, I think what it has done, and Ewan will no doubt expand on this when he when he addresses you, is that it has, it has made him very aware of his own drinking and his own limitations in that respect and how much care he has to take, particularly perhaps when you're drinking at home. I mean, if you're drinking in a bar, then you know how much you're consuming. But when you're drinking with friends in your flat, you probably drink more than than you had um, appreciated. And then, of course, you, you he went out. But not only that, he does work in a bar. And he's now very aware of the fact that that customers don't just deteriorate gradually and you you come to a point where you don't serve them anymore, but they can go from one extreme to they can seem sober one minute and then drunk the next. And it's very much something that he and his, he and the, his other staff um, look out for now. So it has been a very painful experience for him, Your Honours. He has a conviction. He's a conviction that he said to disclose to yourself and he may have to disclose to other people going forward, uh, which is something that he honestly never contemplated would ever happen to him. Um, I would put to you that he has been punished. He has got his criminal conviction. There was obviously a fine, a, a fairly... Um, modest fine, your, your honours, and a fairly modest surcharge, I would say, and, and I think that would uh, reflect the, the, the attitude of the court. As the police have mentioned, and I think Collins confirmed, the police have made no recommendation. They have left it up to the board to make a decision. It is open to the board to, uh, it is open to the police to make a recommendation, um, but they have not done so here. Um, in terms of the legislation, that the board are obliged to take action if they consider it to be necessary. So he's been per he's been punished, but if you consider it to be necessary, I would put to you that it is not necessary, that this was a one-off situation by Ewan, for which, as I say, is, he is highly ashamed, but it is three years have passed and it is not something that I think will ever repeat itself and he will be very careful with his drinking from, from now on. Um, that's all I have to say, Your Honours. I'll be happy to answer any questions, but if I could pass you over to Ewan, who would like to say something as well. Thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to, again, regret uh, express my regret. Um, it's something completely out of character for myself and something that, <clears throat> that will not, has not um, happened again. Uh, it, it has made me more aware uh, of of drinking in general and in within the licensed trade <clears throat> on the other side of the bar my um my view of that and view of customers being served drinks at different levels of intoxication um it, it's something that yeah I, i'm very ashamed of and very embarrassed about um i, I, I just uh, yeah sorry OK, thanks for that, Mr uh, Murchie. Are there any questions for Mr Murchie? We've got Councillor Ahern, then Councillor Parrott. Uh, good morning, Mr Murchie. And uh, I just want a quick question. Um, you're currently working, I understand. Can I ask how long you've been working in that bar? And were you refused any um, positions prior to that working based on the, the conviction you had? Um, in, in my current position, I've been there since the start of June. <clears throat> Before that, I was I was in a job for five years, um, so it, it, it didn't really cross over. I made my manager in my previous job aware of of the convict of the charge when it happened, um, and of the conviction as it was pending. Um, but I wasn't looking for any other positions in the, within the interim. Um, I did disclose it to my to my new employers. When I applied for the position, um, I had I had a previous 
sort of relationship of having met them before. And so it was something they saw as was completely out of character. Um, and they understood that it wasn't a risk to them or the business um, or the trade. Can I just clarify, you said that you, you made your previous employer aware of it. it. That wasn't a reason for you leaving that job? Um, no, no, I... Uh, could I clarify that as well? Um, Your Honour, you used to work at the Grosvenor Hotel in Edinburgh and it's closed for refurbishment. Um, how you and came in our course, we did, we did our courses in the Grosvenor Hotel and it closed in April, May, May, May. Yeah. May. it closed in May and, and it's going to be closed for a year or so for a major refurbishment. So all the staff were reallocated to other Hilton hotels or went elsewhere. Thanks for that clarity. Thank you. Councillor Paddett. Thank you very much and, uh, and thank you for what you've said. Can I just confirm that um, <clears throat> following the training and, and granting of the personal licence, um, you're not actually working in a position um, where you're using that personal licence, but are, are, are you looking for employment that would use that personal licence? Thank you. Well, Yun is working in a, in a bar and he, he has got a senior position and it is likely, Your Honour, that he would be appointed. It is intended that he would be appointed the premises manager, but um, it was thought appropriate to wait until after this hearing. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Anderson. Uh, sorry, good last week. Right. I'm not sure. Correct. What experience have you had in the licence trade anyway um, since becoming you know, past 16 or 18 years old the last seven or eight years? What experience the licence trade have you had? Aged um, 18, I started working in the then the Hilton Edinburgh Grosvenor, um, waiting and then bartending. Um, and then as the years progressed, supervising and then uh, the bar and restaurant manager there towards the end, uh, just before it's prior to its closure. Um, so I'm now 24, so it's six years or so of um, licensed trade experience. Thank you. Could I just ask a, a question regarding um, the discrepancy between the um, email uh, which refers to a £280 fine uh, and the um, police letter which talks about the £180 fine and the £10 surcharge? Yes, the £280, that's obviously an email from ourselves, you, um, Your Honours, and we must have picked it up as a £180 fine and a £100 surcharge, so a total of 280 um, when this came in, I was quite surprised at the reference to £10, but I think we must have misinterpreted that as being 100 instead of 10. OK, thank you. Are there any other questions? No. Um, would the police like to sum up? Thank you. Although this incident occurred prior to Mr Murchie applying for his personal licence, his behaviour on this occasion in a licensed premise, uh, an assault on a female who was attempting to assist him, falls below that as what is expected of a personal licence holder. Um, I just reiterate again that Police Scotland make no representation in relation to this uh, and invite the board to consider all options to them. Thanks. Um, thank you for that. Um, and Mr. Murchie or Mr. Donaldson, would you like to sum up? I, I think we've had a, an opportunity, um, a fair opportunity to put our case, Your Honours. Um, I, I, I don't disagree with what the, what the police say. Um, I, I think it's not just a case of n not being behaviour, not being behaviour that's appropriate to a personal licence holder, but you and himself saying it. But it's said it's not behaviour that's appropriate to him. So this is not this is something that he is ashamed of, regardless of whether or not he's a personal licence holder. Uh, he can't understand how it happened and it will never happen again. Um, thank you, uh, Mr MacDonald. I think we're um, ready to uh, make a decision. Um, do we wish to retire? Yeah, OK. 
Um, could all members and the deputy clerk please leave the meeting room um, for the breakout room uh, and participants, um, if you could remain here uh, un until we return, uh, you will be uh, muted so you'll not be heard whilst we're away uh, and a slide will be brought across the screen, uh, but you may be, uh, still be seen on the thumbnails.
Sure enough, you can let us know when you're able to bring the um, councillor James and Brock Wotherin. That's fine. Thank you. Countess Down, Shona, or? OK, um, I think we're um, now ready to uh, come to a decision. Uh, do we have a motion? Councillor Parrott. Um, I have a motion that we note the offence on the personal licence and take no other action. Do I have a seconder? Do you have a seconder for that? I'll second that. Seconded by uh, Councillor McPherson. Uh, is there an amendment? There's no amendment. Can I ask the deputy clerk if there's anything to add? Nothing, convener. I think that's clear decision that to note the uh, as is a, you're obliged to do so. The offence is noted on the personal license, and no action is there thereafter being taken. Um, thanks very much. Uh, thanks for your attendance. This brings uh, the proceedings to an end. Thank you.